Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone? You pay paradise and put up a parking lot. Hey, welcome back to the Let's Play. So in our city, we've built a lot of things here and we've got a bit of greenery, but we have basically got rid of it. We have destroyed nature to build this city and that is, that's just not going to do. So... I have started preparing an area, and today we are going to build a park, a, a park central to the city, a, a central park, if you will. I've prepared some shulker boxes with some things that we are going to use, it's just the bare bone stuff that we're going to need, and I've laid out this field of sea lanterns here, which is going to provide the lighting, uh, all hidden of course, because we are going to start off by laying down some of this. So on the area that the sea lanterns are on we're going to chuck green wool uh, or green carpet I'm not too sure yet and then on these areas we're going to have grass and then it should provide a nice sort of strip look like it's been it's been mowed in a certain way and that is going to be the grass. Now we're probably going to end up taking a lot of this down um, because we're going to build certain things in certain areas, put some hedges up, lots of greenery and things. But for the first part, we're going to lay this down and I'll bring you back in. We'll see how that looks. We'll move on to the next step. It's in! It's in and I think it looks okay. It's a bit trippy. It looks like <laughs> it kind of struggles to load it in a little bit. Or Maybe not, maybe it's just the way it looks, but it's it's a lot of grass. It's a lot of grass. More than a shulker box of grass and uh, nearly a shulker box of carpets, but we have got the greenery in. So we're on the way. Now we're still in 1.16. I'm not gonna upload and I'm not gonna upgrade until we've got 1.18. Just couldn't really see the need for it. Um so no moss, but <laughs> I think the green carpet looks okay. So what we need to do now is we need to, to get in a fence, it's the whole thing's going to be fenced off and I was thinking something like this let's see what we think and then maybe we can go up two here one of these, maybe another one let's get some sea lanterns on and do that and then let's come over here and do the same thing if I can remember one, two, yeah one of these, one of these, one of these, and then we get some more stairs in. Now it's just stone, but I might, I might get some, some mossy in here, maybe some cracked to get a bit of variety. But I think this is the look. And I want chains along here. I was going to go iron bars, but I think they're just a bit much. I like that they're dark. And then behind, well, let's get rid of this. Have I got? Yeah, let's chuck some of this down. Okay, and then we're going to have a hedge behind. Now I might get some dead bushes. And maybe we can have some dead bushes, but otherwise I think it'd look good if the whole area has a hedge behind it. And actually, I don't like these sea lanterns. They're going. We're going to try normal lanterns. Let's see if that looks any better. We could change those out to soul lanterns perhaps. But that's that's looking much better. So we'll get that all the way around. Come up with the design for for an entrance to get in, and then we can look at adding some features over here. For instance, oh, there's a creeper there. We just watch out for him. But where our beacon is, we need to make a way that the beacon light can still shine through. And these are both solid blocks. So I think we're going to put a, a lake of sorts there. So we're going to be tearing out a lot of this. And also we need to add a path, so we'll be tearing out quite a lot of this grass <laughs> at some point. But let's get the walls in for now. The walls are in! They're in all the way around. Let's take a look. It's looking good. I like everything other than the lanterns. I think they need to change out to soul lanterns, but otherwise I think it looks good. We got the high hedge on the inside. And it's looking pretty spacious in here. I've marked out some doors, so we're going to be putting a path through here and then we'll be putting a path here, here, here and here and then I think we'll have something in the middle here so it's some design to be done but I think the next stage yeah, will be to get these paths in 
but I'm pretty happy with how it looks at the moment, even though it is just plain old stone brick. So let's get that path in. I'm going to tear out all of this grass that I've just put in. Uh, but in its place, it's going to start coming together even nicer. The paths are in. Let's take a look. So here they are. I think they're looking pretty good. I think it's a, it's a nice mix. I've got the leaves all around. Oh, why can I see a sea lantern? I shouldn't be able to see this sea lantern. I'll fix that in a moment. But I think it's in. I think it's all lit up enough. I shouldn't be getting any spawns around here. We have been getting some spawns out here, but we'll deal with that in a little while. Um, yeah, so the paths are in, hedges are in, lighting's in, and I changed out all of this for the soul lanterns, which I think looks good, and hopefully nothing spawns up there. Um, but I don't like the sea lanterns, I think the sea lanterns look bad, and we've got some better lighting up here, which I think I'm going to use. So we've got beacons, I think it looks much better on the entrance. We're going to go for beacons, which means that I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I need 10 beacons. It's off to the Wither Skeleton Farm. Here we are, and before I even turn this thing on, I think I might have some Wither Skeleton Skulls, so let's check down here. This one. Oh, 53. We've got plenty. So I need 10, 10, 10. That will do. Uh, we still got 23 for another day, that's fine. So that saved us a little bit of time. Let's get some soul sand and fight 10 withers. And we're going to cheese them under the end portal. We got the beacons in all the way around, 10 beacons, not too hard at all, and I think it's looking really good. Uh, I've added some polished andesite stairs, so it's a smooth transition when we get in here. I think it's looking really nice in here, considering we've not decorated it at all, and it's looking this, <laughs> this good. So it's a good start. We got something to do now. I would like to build a tree, uh, a custom tree at that because it's not something that I'm too familiar with and something that I'd like to to give a go. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is mark out something here with dirt that looks sort of like a tree and then we'll come back and we'll take a look step by step at how this thing is coming together. Uh, I'm aiming to, to make like a willow tree, so we'll mark this out with dirt, and then we'll do the next step. There, there it is. <laughs> I think I think it might look bad. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think it might look good with leaves on and obviously wood. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and throw that together. I feel like it needs to be a bit taller, maybe, with how bulky I've made it. However. If it's much taller than it is, it's it's going to be huge, and there's going to be leaves on top. So let's change it out to wood and see how that looks. Huh? Huh? It definitely looks more like a tree. <laughs> it definitely looks more like a tree, more than that did anyway. Uh, <laughs> let's get some leaves on it. And the leaves are in. The leaves obviously make it look much, much better. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks like a tree. I think it looks pretty organic. Uh, yeah, the shape looks good from most angles. It doesn't come over to the path too much. We're going to decorate it a little bit more. But I don't want to I don't want to overleaf it. I like that it sort of looks a bit sparse and you can see through and it looks like it's hanging down and you come underneath and you can see all of the branches so I think it's looking pretty good we're gonna do some work around the base and I might hang some lights from it maybe even get some some other things in there to give it some color but that's the tree now we need to think about how we're hiding this and I think we're gonna hide it with a lake or with a pond more like in this size so 
I'm going to bring a pond around here. So let's get that in. The pond is in and it's looking pretty nice, I think. We've got this little area where the water comes through, maybe cycles through. Not too sure, just thought we needed a bit of elevation there. In here we've got some coral fans, some sea pickles, some sea grass. And most importantly, the beacons can shine through this slab area here. So when we need our beacon power, we can turn it on and it will shine through because there's no solid blocks above it. Also, we've got the little lily pads so we can do some parkour in here if I don't fall off. But that's in. We've got the tree in. We've got the walkways in. So now it's time to add some colour. This place needs some colour. And we're going to add some flower beds here, there. I think we're going to add a flower bed in here and at the other end. And then I'm thinking maybe a little statue here. I'll have to try and find out if I can make a design because we don't want it too tall but probably a bit taller than the woolen hedge. So let's let's get some flowers and add some colour to this place and make it look even more beautiful. Let's take these ugly beacons off and take a look at our beautiful park as it is. So let's come round here and check it out. I think it's looking pretty good. So you come in through the entrance, we've got a little chessboard here with shulker heads and enderman heads for the white and black pieces. I added an extra path around here with a nice little bench we can sit on with a little lamp to keep it light at all times. Maybe we're looking over the pond. It's looking pretty good. Uh, I've added quite a few of these benches and you see there's... Uh, there's lighting above all of them. I mean, there's lighting everywhere here. <laughs> and yet, I've still had a mob or two spawn. Um, so yeah, obviously we've got our pond looking very nice. And our tree, which I'm incredibly happy with. We've got some lights underneath it. It's looking pretty good. Uh, we've added flower beds for some colour. Looking very nice. We've mixed in the two tool with the, the one tool flowers. We've done that in all of the beds all of the different ones, the so alliums and lilacs there and let me get on here, got it slow moving without the beacons aha, got these little trees here that I've added in just to, to give a bit more depth to these areas, I've got them on both sides they've got vines on them to to make it look different to, to just the leaf blocks that we're using here as a hedge um, so here's the one for the yellow flowers, obviously made sure that they're pointing in because from the side they do not look as amazing um, and again over here so that is that is it let's take a fly over and just have a look at how it, it looks from above I think it looks pretty complete I think it looks like a like a park like you might see it in a city so I'm really happy with this uh, I think that's probably going to be all we do in here now this is just going to be our relaxation zone maybe a nice little place to come for intros or just to just to sit down and enjoy the views but I think next we're gonna do this little road here I don't think it's gonna take very long at all but I just want this to be a big path that we can walk along in the town leading along the park just behind our house and it's just gonna be one big long path obviously it's gonna have to be well lit because this is where all the mobs have been spawning recently <laughs> let's get that done and then I got a little redstone contraption that I want to show you so I went ahead and put the road in or as I'm calling it now the rainbow boulevard I like it a lot it's uh, it's pretty basic at the moment but I think at some point we'll have some things arching over so you've got colored glass all of the colored glass and it actually repeats um, it's pretty basic design. It's just you know spruce logs, strip spruce logs, spruce planks, some trapdoors, and then all of the glass and sea lanterns. Let's take a high up look. In fact, let's get higher. <laughs> there we go. So I actually think it looks better from the ground floor or ground level where you don't see the sea lanterns. It looks pretty good. Pretty good. I didn't want to spend too much time on it. Didn't really think it deserved any building in the episode because it was just so repetitive to do. What I've also done in between cuts, if we come around here, is I finally tidied up all of the shulker boxes from the projects we've been doing recently. So if we come into our storage room here, look at my ender chest. So <laughs> all of these shulker boxes are empty. I've got uh, eyes of ender and end crystals in case I get stuck in 
the overworld, I can find uh, an end portal. If I get stuck in the end, then I can respawn the dragon and get out of there. Uh, I've added a couple more shulker boxes into the storage system. You see our dyed terracotta's gone over there. Uh, I think there's two more things in here. Uh, I've added workstations, <laughs> pressure plates, but our shulker boxes are all tidied up now, which is pretty good. So let's, oh, let's turn the lights off. Let's go take a look at this redstone project. This is the project. It is a fully automatic wood farm. And this is because we need a lot of wood for pistons, chests, hoppers and things like that. So I didn't build this on camera because it is not my design. Uh, it's a shulker craft a TNT farm, a tree farm. Uh, it's not their original design either. So I'll, I'll leave in the description whose design it is, but it works pretty well. It does, however, use a lot of bone mill. So to compensate for that, I thought this might work as a little <laughs> bone mill farm with villagers picking carrots, sending it to the guy in the middle, and he composts them. This has not generated much at all. This is I've maybe got four stacks out of this, and I built it maybe... <laughs> 30 in-game days ago, so that's pretty useless. Let's uh, let's turn this off for now. I'll show you underneath where this all goes because I did put some stuff in here. Um, so here we filter out the the stems. Where are they? There they are. We've got some warp to crimson stems. It makes both of them, and then it bone meals some of the excess. Now you get about oh I didn't mean to do that. You get about 10% of what you use back. It's not the fully renewable version. I, I probably should have made the raise work version, but it was so many hoppers I was a bit concerned about lag. So I didn't build that. Um, now we do have a, a skeleton spawner that we use. It's fully AFK. It mends our tools when we're using it. And we have a wither skeleton farm. But this thing chews up so much uh, bone meal that it's I can't use those <laughs> there's not enough there's not enough bones coming out of that to supply this um, we do have our pumpkin and melon farm which is always going overfilled so I have just let it go overfilled and it, it produces a decent amount of bone meal and this is all AFK but I think we need to make sure that one we're cycling the the bone meal back into that so the bone meal that's coming out of it so it can be continuously used uh, we need, maybe need to join this up so this filters over the bone meal over there so it's it's ready to go and I think we probably need to build another bone meal farm I'm thinking maybe a cactus farm we've already got a cactus farm in here which is producing a reasonable amount of cactus although it's quite small and this is all green dye which is what I've been using it for um, but I think it's probably time you know that we don't need any more green dye and if we do we can we can always just come get it uh, but this I'm not sure produces that much bone meal maybe it does but I think it's probably about 10 or 11 until you get a bone meal so I need to find a new bone meal farm that I can maybe replace these villagers over here with get rid of these villagers here don't shoot me. Uh, and we can put something there. So maybe a cactus farm. Maybe a nether root farm or something like that. I'm not too sure, but something needs to go there. So I'm going to do some testing. See what produces the most bone meal. And then we can maybe build that up and link it up so it can be permanently fully AFKable. I have done the testing for bone meal. So these are all of the things I tested to see how much bone meal each would produce. Uh, and then I sort of ranked them on their merits. But let, let's take a look at the results first. So pumpkins produce the most. We've got 172 bone meal from 1,728 pumpkins. Uh, so it's about 1 in 10. That's, that's not too bad. Um, next was potatoes and then carrots and it's not too much in, in that, it's just one bone meal, maybe in the margin of error. Uh, then was the melon slice, which was quite a lot lower, 132. 
that's a 7.75 percent and then we had cactus at 132 which is 7.63 so i was a little bit surprised by these results because i expected the the crimson vine and the weeping vine to have done better the crimson vine did the same as the cactus um, but the reason I've put it lower is these farms need flying machines and they can load and unload uh, and also could be a bit laggy whereas the cactus farm out of all of these farms will produce the least lag. These need observers, pistons, there's light updates, uh, minecarts and all the like. These need villagers which takes I think is actually probably more of a lag than the cactus farm. Melon farm, same as the, the pumpkin, but if it's producing less, we don't really want it. The cactus farm, maybe need two or three hoppers <laughs> and a composter. Uh, so that is really the, the best one for lag, and it produces a decent amount of bone meal. Not, not a lot, so it's going to have to be a massive cactus farm. Uh, again, the, these need flying machines, the sugar cane, lots of observers and pistons kelp would need a flying machine although I don't think it's fair really because the kelp grows so much quicker that I think we'd end up getting quite a lot out of the kelp so that might be better um, but it also needs a lot of signs to stop the kelp from creating water sources so we can't really use kelp sweet berries it was it was fun to experiment with uh, it need foxes and we'd need quite a few layers so we probably will have a sweet berry farm but a very small one in absolute last place is bamboo with zero i never knew this didn't compost this might have even been the best one because it produces the most um, but unfortunately it does not compost so forget bamboo i think out of all of these we're already composting all of these so that's fine, we can keep those composting as they are. Um, but cactus, we're going to build a big cactus farm to fuel it. So let's get back over to the survival world. And so I think we're going to build this massive cactus farm underneath the city where I'm running about now. Here's Central Park and the Rainbow Boulevard. And where that diamond block is there, that's the world spawn. So... I don't know, maybe we'll do it central on that, I'm not too sure, but we're going to dig a massive hole, probably all the way down to bedrock, should always be loaded in when we're in the city, it should be producing loads of bone meal for us, and I've already done some of the hard work digging down here, so it's come down, maybe you remember this from an earlier episode, but we've dug out a big area around here, so I think it'll be coming down around this way. It's all lit up, will help us with spawn proofing and things. But I think for today's episode, that's going to do us. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.